Hey kids, Mr Flar here, hope you're well. Now for the last couple of weeks I've been lucky enough to be riding this, the brand new for 2019 BMW R1250 RS, the latest touring bike of BMWs to get the shift cam uh, technology engine. If you're interested in this machine, you're going to want to stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so as I say, for the last couple of weeks I've been lucky enough to have this bike in the garage and I've ridden it as much as I possibly can in all sorts of conditions, on all sorts of roads and ridden the pants off it to really try and get under the skin of what this bike is all about. And in this video, what I'm going to do is bring you the lessons I've learned about this bike. Not just the good things, but the bad things too. I've also done an analysis of the cost of ownership of the bike, so I'll bring you how much it would cost to keep one of these, uh, if you want one, and uh, basically anything and everything about the bike. I've, uh, I've ridden it at night, I've ridden it on fast roads, I've ridden it in the rain, and I've got uh, clips to show you about all that stuff as well as I say at the end of the video I'll bring you the pros and cons of the bike as far as I see it so if you're interested in this bike stick around and stay tuned how about riding the uh, RS 1250 in the wet then well it's one of those days where it uh, one minute it's dry the next minute it's raining it looks like uh, there's another shower on the way we've just had one about uh, five minutes ago it's wet under tyre but I have to say the bike's very confidence inspiring the OEM tyres, which I haven't actually checked what they are, but they're perfectly, uh, perfectly good. I don't feel any lack of grip, and of course you've got all the electronic help you could possibly want, and it's currently possible for a motorcycle. We've well, currently got her in rain mode, so you've got the riding modes, and of course the rain mode softens down the throttle a little bit. It just uh, means you're a bit less likely to uh, go nuts in the rain. And you've got fancy... ABS and traction control, so that together with the rain mode means you're less likely to spin up a wheel or brake suddenly and, uh, and skid the bike. So uh, you've got all the technical help you could possibly have. And here comes the rain proper again. And of course you've got this nice big screen, fairly big frontal area, which is nice and protective from the weather. So it keeps the worst of it off you. So as bikes go, if you're going to have to ride in the rain, let's face it, nobody likes riding in the rain, then this is a pretty good place to be. So thumbs up for the RS for uh, riding in the wet. Okay, so here I am on the uh, M3. How does the RS feel? Well, absolutely lovely, actually. Really smooth. The shift cam engine is really nice at these sorts of speeds. A really nice protection off the bike as well. The front area is a little bit uh, smaller than I'm used to, but nonetheless, the air off the screen that's in the upright position is going right over the top of my head. I'm wearing my showy helmet at the moment. There's no peak on it or anything. Uh, and I'm in still calm air here. There's no turbulent air coming off, which I really like. Can't feel any wind or anything like that on my legs either. Again, this bit, this uh, front area, the fairing, etc., keeping me nice and comfy. The seat on here has got plenty of room to move forward and back as well, so if you want to tuck down into a bit more of a sporty position, you can do. Plenty of room to do that. And of course, with this engine, there's now absolutely bags of overtaking power. If you're on an autobahn, you'll have no problems at all. Plenty of power for quick overtakes. Yeah, the uh, R1250R, nice proposition for long distances on motorways. Exactly what you'd expect of a touring bike. So how about in the urban environment then, in traffic, what's the RS like? Well, pretty good I'd say. Nice and low, I'll get my feet on the deck, so weaving through traffic, not too much of a problem. It does feel quite wide with these big old sticky out mirrors, but they act as, uh, as whiskers, so you know if you can get through a gap or not. The uh, throttle is lovely and smooth at low speeds, there's no jerkiness there. Thank you sir. So no problem there. Obviously the bike's not as tall as a big old adventure bike, so you're not looking over traffic. So situational awareness isn't quite as good. It's got good road presence with its uh, daylight running lights and it's uh, non-intimidating at slow speed. So yeah, through town, no problem at all. Okay, on to some practical matters with the RS then. These are some things that people often ask me. So first thing is, uh, what's it like to pump the tyres up? How hard is it to get at the valve? So uh, I'm glad to say on the BMW they put those right angle valves on. I'll give you a look at those now. 
There you go, you see, so it's dead easy to get your pump in there. So pumping the tyres, not an issue at all. The other thing that often comes up is what about lubing the chain? This does have a uh, centre stand, so it's, it's, you can get the bike up on the centre stand to do maintenance on the bike. But of course, you don't need to lube the chain on this because it is a shaft drive, as you can see, which is a big plus, I think, for this bike. So uh, no messing about with, uh, with chains on this one. Uh, another thing that people often ask me is what's the horn like? So I'll just uh, put the camera down and I'll just show you what the horn work sounds like. Right, now, always quite difficult to actually pick up sounds on the microphone on the GoPro, but uh, let's give her a blast so you can hear. Oh, I have to say, take it from me, that is a pretty loud horn on here. OK, so much for that. Uh, the next thing that people sometimes ask me is, uh, what's it like underneath the seat? So let me take the seat off uh, and show you what we've got there. So in this case, you have to uh, insert the key down here, give it a twist towards the back to release the back seat, I think. I have to put... The I have to put the camera down to do this again, then I'll show you under it. Hang on. In fact, you just move it forward and they both release. It's a slightly different mechanism to what I'm used to on BMW, so that's how that comes off. In fact, I think it's, pretty, it's easier than on my GS. And then underneath the seat, this is what you've got. And a little bit of storage room here. It's all a bit wet under here. Um, and there's the battery and so on. So, uh, yeah, so that's what she looks like under the seat. And the final bit, uh, whilst we're talking about practical matters, uh, one thing that uh, people have asked me to show is how do you go about checking the oil on a bike? Is it a dipstick or a sight glass? Well, in the case of the BMW, I'm glad to say it's a sight glass. It's right underneath here, look. Uh, there she blows. That's where you check the oil. You can see this one is uh, half full, as it should be. So, uh, so that's dead easy. No messing about with the dipstick there. So thumbs up for that. Right, before I show you what it's like to ride the RS actually at night, let me just show you what you get with the lights. When you turn the bike on, uh, this is the uh, the lights in its standard state. So that's just dipped headlights there. Uh, it looks kind of nice. If you press this button here, you get the running lights, which uh, the daylight running lights, which I think are really cool on this. Those bottom bits, they're not eyelids because they're the bottom bits, but I think they look good. The old one, I think, had a strip down here, but I think they look really good. And then the uh, main beam in the usual place, flicker onto main, and she looks like that, super bright. All right, so uh, so much for what they're like during the day. With the magic of YouTube, it's night time, and here I am on the RS uh, in the pitch black, just to check out what she's like at night. And I have to say, she's very, very nice. The lights on this thing are absolutely amazing. This is just on dip beam. As ever, the GoPro never shows in full glory how good the lights are on these bikes. But this is, uh, trust me, one of the better bikes I've ridden. This is dip beam. If I go to full beam, I just push forward on the little trigger on the left of the handlebar, takes it to full beam, and it lights it up further and wider, as you would expect. The display at night, very nice. Gone into night mode on the sat-nav, as you can see. I've got the My Vehicle display on at the moment on the... Uh, on the main TFT, it looks lovely. No horrible reflections or anything like that. In fact, if anything, at night time, it looks better than during the day. The only thing that the uh, Beamer is lacking that the competition, namely KTM have, is the uh, switch gear lit up. Quite complicated switch gear on the Beamer. And you do get used to, you know, you learn where it is, but uh, it's not that dissimilar to the bike that I'm used to riding. My GS has got a similar switch gear. And I have to say, I can't get my fingers and thumbs instantly to the right bit of uh, of switch gear with them not being lit so come on BMW let's get the switch gear lit try it for doing it now I know it's KTM have been doing it for ages it's high time that BMW did it as well that's the only downside of riding and otherwise the lights on this thing are absolutely superb another thumbs up for the RS okay so at the start of the video I promised you that I would give you the cost of ownership uh, for having one of these bikes. So how much is one of these going to cost you? Uh, just to keep it in the garage without even riding it anywhere, what are these kind of fixed costs that go with the R1250RS? Well, I've written them down as usual. Uh, here's what I've found out. So uh, first off, road tax or uh, vehicle excise duty, as we should rightly call it here in the UK. It's over 600cc, so you pay the top whack for that. That is uh, £91 a year. It's slightly more if you pay monthly, oddly. But if you pay in one hit, it's £91. So that works out monthly at £7.58. Uh, next, insurance. Uh, I went and got myself a uh, insurance quote for this bike, so this only applies to me, it's indicative only, uh, so it's for somebody that's got my no claims bonus, lives where I do, of my age, etc. Uh, and the quote I got for this came out at £259.85 with an excess of £600, which seems quite reasonable to me, that's £21.65 a month for insurance. And then servicing, uh, I got a quote from uh, Kevin at Barnstormer in Maidenhead, very uh, helpful chap. He told me that the running in service at 600 miles would cost, uh, if you took it to Barnstormer, around £210. So that's quite expensive, I think, for a running in one, but £210 for the 600 mile service. 
then the service intervals is every 6,000 miles on this bike. The first one would be around about 290-ish. There was a little bit of variability, Kevin said. Um, the 12,000 there's a medium service. At 18,000 it's a bigger service, costing around 450 pounds. That one includes four coil, that sort of things. But for the purposes of this calculation, let's assume 5,000 miles in the first year. That's going to be 210 plus 290. So 500 pounds divided by 12 gives you 41 pounds 66 for servicing a month. So that's that. Um, and if you add those all together, uh, that comes to £70.89 a month. Now, how does that compare with other bikes? Well, OK, actually, when I did the same calculation recently for the F850 GS, so the baby GS, that was 60.94, so about 10 or less. Uh, when I did the um, Aprilia V4 1100 factory a while back, that was uh, 71.83, so a little bit more expensive than this. The KTM 790 Adventure was £41 a month, so very cheap in comparison. So, yeah, this one's £70.89 uh, if you want to keep it in the garage, uh, ready, to ready to ride. Of course, that doesn't include consumables like tyres and uh, brakes, that sort of thing, which, of course, you're going to have to replace every now and then, and, of course, any unexpected stuff that comes up. But uh, that's how much you should budget uh, in terms of cost of ownership for a bike like this. OK, how about going places you don't normally go on the bike? How about going on tour on the R1250 RS? Well, excellent bike for that course. That is exactly what it's designed for. In my mind, it is a touring bike. And in fact, when I did my big uh, Norway tour up to the uh, Arctic Circle uh, last year, Bill was on an RS, had absolutely no trouble whatsoever. In terms of the riding position, it's very comfortable. You've got a big old comfortable seat. You're sitting fairly upright. You can ride it all day long in really nice comfort. It's got, uh, you know, heated grips. So you're good there. You've got points for hard luggage. So you can carry panniers. You've got the excellent Navigator 5 as well, or Navigator 6 on this one, in fact. So uh, your sat-nav is all sorted as well, and that's fully integrated into the bike, which is something I love. It's nice and smooth. It's non-fatiguing. There's good weather protection. Yeah, for riding long distances all day long. Absolutely love it. Not only that, because it's a bit of a jack of all trades, it's not only is it uh, good at doing long distances, but it's also great at scratching as well. It's got a bit of a sports bike side to it. When you get to where you're going, you can have great fun as well. So yeah, going on tour, great idea on the uh, R1250 RS. OK, so before I get on and get the uh, bucket and sponges out and clean this puppy, let's just have a quick look at where the dirt collects on this one. So all the usual places, basically. The, the things that stick in my mind are here, look. The exhaust is absolutely covered in crud, uh, as you'd imagine, and the back end generally is pretty cruddy. Uh, if we come around the other side, the uh, swing arm absolutely covered where the shaft drive goes. That's really dirty under there, again, as you'd imagine. No surprise there. And then, of course, at the front as well, where it chucks up the dirt. Not too bad. Um, but the usual suspects anyway. All right, I'll get the bucket and sponges out and give her a clean and then I'll let you know how easy it was to do that. OK, so there we go, she's all clean and lovely again. Uh, how would I rate this bike in terms of difficulty of cleaning? Well, to be honest with you, it's, uh, it's got quite a lot of scaffolding and nooks and crannies on this bike, a little bit like uh, the GS that I know so well. Uh, so even though it's a fared bike and you'd think that it might be easy to clean, uh, it actually, I'd, I'd say it's one of the trickier bikes to clean, but uh, once she's done, she comes up lovely again. I mean, look at this exhaust gleaming now. Lovely, normality is restored. Okay, let's come to my uh, favourite uh, local car park to do my so-called lugging about test and just uh, see what the bike would be like if you have to move the thing around, for example, on your driveway. That's what this is supposed to simulate. Now, I am uh, just want to find myself an empty parking space to do this in to also check out what the uh, turning circle is like. 
Very busy down here today. This is the local train station. It's uh, what is it, a Thursday when I'm recording this? And you can see all these poor souls having to commute into work here. I've taken nearly all the car park. Right, let's, uh, let's stick her here. All right, middle of the spot. Find neutral. Stands easy to get down. There we go. Rightio then. Uh, so, let's see how we go then. So there's the, these sort of grab handly things at the back here, but I actually find it's easier if you just get hold of the seat actually. So uh, let's push her up. She's got that lovely low centre of gravity. So actually, uh, pretty easy to get off the stand. Let's go on to full lock, which doesn't feel that tight actually. Here we go. No, it's a bit, uh, the turning set was not as good as I expected. It's nowhere near as good as, say, the GS, for example. And this is a very similar bike to that in many respects. There we go, pop the stand down there. It does feel nice and light when you lift it up because of the low centre of gravity, I love that. But look at uh, the turning circle. So we went from the middle of this one here, all the way around and right to the very edge of that. That is the uh, tightest turn it'll do. That's one of the wider turning circles that I've seen on a bike. But uh, generally speaking, nice and light to move around. Even though it's a relatively heavy bike, it is light to feel when you just pick it up off the stand. It is not as heavy as you'd expect, thanks to that uh, boxer low centre of gravity, as I mentioned. So no worries lugging this big brute around your garage. Okay, brand new bikes are all very well to have, aren't they? They're lovely things. I mean, they look beautiful. They ride lovely because everything's new and tight and brilliant. But uh, And you have a test ride and it all seems lovely. But you only really get to know about bikes when you ride them for a period of time. And of course, I've been lucky enough with this bike to do exactly that. I've ridden it for several hundred miles over the last couple of weeks. So I uh, tried to get under the skin and tried to work out you know, what I really love and don't like about the bike. So I said at the beginning of the video I'd take you through the pros and cons. Let's go through the negatives first. As ever, I've written a list so I don't forget anything. And I have to say, uh, my negative list is much less than the positive list on this one. I have struggled to find bad things to say about this bike. I do really like it, but I found a few. First one off, um, it's potentially um, a little bit cramped for taller riders. Now, generally speaking, compared to other bikes, it's not cramped at all. But if you compare it against things like a big adventure bike, then it is a little more cramped. I'm very used to riding the BMW R1200 GS, my personal bike, um, and on that bike your legs are a little bit straighter than they are on here. On here your legs are tucked up in a bit of a sportier position, so not a problem for me. I'm five foot eight and I find it perfectly comfortable, but if you're a tall person over six foot, you will find this more cramped than the big adventure style bikes. That may be something worth considering. Uh, the next thing that I didn't like so much about the bike is the sound of it. Now this comes with, this is actually the optional exhaust, this big chrome one, um, and uh, well it just sounds to me when you start it, it sounds like a diesel car. There's nothing nice about the sound of this bike unfortunately. Uh, personal opinion, you might like it, but I don't like the sound. I think if I got one of these I'd have to, I wouldn't bother with that chrome pipe, which I think just looks horrible anyway. Uh, I would take that off and get uh, an aftermarket pipe. They must be available for these, or they will be very soon if they're not already, uh, and just to make things sound a bit better, because it does sound horrible I have to say. Uh, number three I've written down here is hideous exhaust pipe. That chrome monstrosity is actually an extra, believe it or not. You pay more for that. Um, I wouldn't go there. I don't like that. You might like it, but I don't. Um, and then the only other thing I could find as a negative was actually the cost of the bike once it's spec'd up. In typical BMW fashion, all the things that you would want on the bike, like the sat-nav and the fancy electronic suspension and so on, are all extras. Um, I mean, you can buy the various packages. This is the exclusive model that comes with some of those things you're going to want. But this all bumps the price up. So, you know, by the time you've uh, finished specking out the bike, you've got, uh, you know, you've got an expensive bit of kit on your hands. If you want to get the details, by the way, of, of all the specification of the bike, and you haven't seen my first ride review, go and check out that video. I'll put a link up here somewhere. In that, I also talk about the costs of the bike, uh, as well as, um, you know, the overall spec of the machine. So go and check that out if you haven't watched that. Alrighty, that's enough of the negatives. What about the positives? So personally, I found far more to love about this bike than I did to not like about it. As I said, my uh, list of positives is a lot longer than a list of negatives, so I'll rattle through these. But these are the things that came to mind as I was riding the bike over the last couple of weeks that I really love about this. First of all, this engine, the 1250 shift cam, is an amazing unit. It's so smooth compared to the previous boxers, and it goes like stink as well. This bike, it's got amazing uh, grunt and torque. You can ride it lazily if you want to, or if you want to ride it like a sports bike, you can do that too. This engine is sweet as sweet as you like. It's really, really good. So uh, number one is this engine. It's just uh, it's go and it's smoothness. I love that. Next thing I like about the bike, electronics package. BMW really has this nailed these days. The electronics on here are second on. It's got the fancy suspension. It's got the uh, SOS call button. It's got that amazing TFT that I talk about quite often. Um, it's got lean angle sensitive ABS and traction control. You name it, it's got everything you could possibly want and many more things too. It's a, it's a really nice uh, electronics package. If you like electronics on your bike, you're going to love this puppy. 
Um, next down here, and these are in no particular order by the way, is the handling. Uh, it's just lovely on this. It's one of those bikes that it kind of hits the sweet spot. It's not really super stable that you have to muscle it through the corners, but it's not so agile, it's flighty, and it feels like, you know, it's going to tip in at any moment. You just sort of, it's just a really nice bike. It's, they've got it just set up right as far as I'm concerned. For a touring bike, it's exactly where you want it. It's fun to ride, it's beautiful through the corners, it's nice and stable, but it's not too stable that you have to fight the thing. Uh, next up, I've written here TFT, I've already mentioned that, the TFT on BMWs these days, I think personally, is the best TFT of them all. It does all sorts of clever things, not only does it look nice anyway, but uh, you can control it via the whiz wheel on the handlebars, which I like, and you can swap between the sat-nav and the whiz wheel to do that. Although why they don't build in a proper sat-nav onto the TFT, I don't know. That's surely got to be the thing for uh, bikes in the next few years. Um, but yeah, the TFT is lovely. Even things like as the bike warms up, you know, the rev limit goes uh, up as the bike warms up. Things like that are just very clever. The way the numbers get bigger as you rev the bike, all that I really love. Uh, next up, I've mentioned the brakes. The brakes on here are just amazing, both front and rear, great stoppers. Uh, suspension again comes with the handling. It's beautiful, eminently adjustable electronically, but it just feels beautiful. This uh, the integrated sat nav I do love. The way BMW do that again with that little whiz wheel on the handlebars, the way you can control that all. I don't know why other bike manufacturers don't do that. If you're not going to have uh, a sat nav properly integrated into the TFT, then that's the next best way of doing it. I love the way that uh, BMW do that. Next one, more, bit of a surprise for me this, because, um, you know, again, I'm quite used to riding liquid-cooled boxes, but in the case of my GS, which is a liquid-cooled boxer, the gearbox of mine is pretty clunky, pretty agricultural. Not the case on this. This has the uh, Gear Shift Assist Pro. You can go clutchless up and down on this, and it's as smooth as you like. Once again, allied to that new smooth 1250 engine, really is great, the gearbox on this. Now, no longer is it a clunky nightmare unit. Next. Because it's a, a boxer, it's got a low centre of gravity, and that has the uh, great advantage of meaning it's very easy to ride, unintimidating. Even though it's technically a weighty bike, it doesn't feel like it. The weight is held nice and low. When you come to a stop, I can get my feet flat on, flat on the deck, and uh, it doesn't feel like I'm going to drop the thing. So it's unintimidating, uh, very easy uh, bike to ride. Next up, and this again, this is a purely... Um, matter of personal taste. It's now got the front end that's symmetrical. I love the look of this bike now. The previous generation bikes had those squinty lights on the front where the lights were actually slightly different inside and it just looked a bit odd. BMW loved the asymmetrical stuff in the last few years. Now they've gone more symmetrical. Thumbs up for me as far as I'm concerned. I think this bike now looks much better than the old bike as well. And then uh, last but not least on my positive list, um, just the weather protection on this. this um, the fairing does give you a good deal of weather protection. The windscreen in its uppermost position uh, works really nicely. I don't get any buffeting. It's got little things like these deflectors here that uh, actually make sure there's no turbulence hitting you. The protection on this is really, really nice. So, uh, yeah, so those are the list of positives that uh, I came up with in my time with the RS. OK, so there we have it. That's my uh, in-depth review of the brilliant BMW R1250 RS. As you've gathered, I really love this bike. It's, uh, it's one of the ones that's kind of got me. I, I really think it's a, a beautiful bike. And in many ways, this makes much more sense for the pure road rider than something like a big adventure bike does. If you're only going to ride on the road and you're not going to go off-road and you're a fan of BMWs, you want to get some of this R1250 action going, then uh, the uh, RS is very, very well worth considering. It's a, a lovely bike and I've really enjoyed having it here. So uh, thumbs up for the RS. Thank you very much indeed to BMW UK for lo loaning me the bike. It's certainly one uh, I shall be considering uh, when my GS comes in, uh, if I ever replace that. But uh, no plans at the moment. But if I do, this is going to be one of the ones that I'm thinking about. All right, well, I don't just do uh, reviews here on the Missenden Fly. If this is the first video you've seen of mine, uh, don't think that. I do all sorts of stuff here. I do stuff here in the garage about uh, how to maintain and look after your bike. Uh, I don't uh, just do in-depth reviews, but I do first rides of various bikes as well. Um, I do kit reviews. I do trips and tours at home and abroad. Uh, I do live streams. Uh, I do a monthly news item. Basically, anything and everything to do with motorcycles. I'll try and cover it here on the Missenden Fly. If you haven't done so already, it'd be fantastic to have you subscribe down below, uh, and that way I'll see you on the next video. All right. Uh, look forward to speaking to you then. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.